All right, guys, welcome back to Crossman Productions. Um, I am super stoked about today um, with today's guest. So uh, we've had, uh, you know, last week uh, on the Crossing Pro Show, we brought on the cast and crew to Voorhees, Night of the, of the Beast. Um, and one of the people on that uh, in that film who plays Voorhees is uh, James Stokes. So James Stokes is uh, actually going to be our guest today. So I wanted to bring James back uh, and have James kind of share his story and his journey with, uh, with you guys. So let me bring in James. What's up, brother? Hey, Parks. How you doing, man? I'm doing awesome. And thank you so much uh, for, uh, for being on the show, man. Oh, man. Thank you so much for asking me to come back. I, I really appreciate it. So, um, you know, like I was saying, we, we uh, I got to, a chance to talk to, um, you know, the cast and crew, um, what, about a week, week ago, two weeks ago, uh, on the Cross of Pro show. Um, and uh, awesome crew. Um, oh, you know, my God, yeah. Uh, I got to meet you all you guys through uh, Olivia Disney, which I love Olivia. Um, yep. You're so, super cool person. Uh, but, um, you know, as we were talking – um, and you were sharing some of your stories. I was like, you know what? I want to bring this guy back uh, and put, you know, bring him on the cross uh, cross my production show because uh, you know it's a chance to actually um, go more in depth with you know sitting down with the uh, the and learning. Um, so you know, as we were talking then, I was like, I was already intrigued. So I'm super excited about bringing you in so we can. Uh, um, you know, kind of get to learn more about you and your journey. So cool, man. With that said, um, tell us kind of like where you were born and raised and what was life like for James? Wow. Well, up. um, I was born and raised in a little town right outside of Hopkinsville, Kentucky called Pembroke, Kentucky. I was born in a doctor's office, to be honest with you. And, uh -huh. um, uh, I was, uh, I'm one of, uh, of seven kids. And so I've got, uh, uh, I've got two older sisters, an older brother, and then me, and then three younger brothers. And so, uh, yep, and um, it's a big family. Uh, so growing up was kind of, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the early 70s or mid to late 70s, I guess you would say. I was born 71. So okay. to the mid to late 70s growing up as a kid, you know, life totally different than it is now. Right. And so, you know, we went outside and we played until it got dark. And then, you know, you don't come back in the house until the you know sun's down. Right. So, I mean, that's the kind of, kind of life, you know, I always was an outside person. I was always big in sports. You know, I played basketball and, right. and baseball and all that stuff. And then got into football, of course, um, throughout my middle school and, or I guess elementary school, I played junior pro basketball and some little league football. And then in, in middle school, I started, I was in a band. I got in a band. I wanted to, I wanted to broaden my horizon. So a lot of people don't know this, but I mean, I did, I played baritone in a band for, for three years, uh -huh. all the way up to my eighth grade year. And then I had to make a choice because they told me, you know, it's either band or you're going to have to play or sports, you know? And of right. course I, I chose sports and dropped band. Right. And then, um, in high school, I was in musical theater. I, 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 I took it and loved it. And it's just that I think that's where my entire love for the arts came to be was in, in, in uh, high school, my freshman year in right. a drama class. Right. You know, I just love, I love drama. I love singing, dancing and doing all that stuff. And that's where I learned to do it. So I took choir. I was in advanced choir, male chorus, chamber ensemble. I did all of that all the way through high school. Of course, then I played all three sports. I was basketball, baseball, and football player. Wow. Um, so yeah, my football, my football career really took off in high school. I guess my sophomore year when I became um, an actually got to start some on the varsity team as a quarterback on the team. And then um, of course I was a quarterback for my junior and senior year. And um, I really excelled in football. I, I, I did okay in baseball and basketball, but I really excelled in football. Went on to college to play uh, football. And okay. so uh, I had a college career in football. And uh, so, yeah, and then after that, well, I had a bout in the Marines. So 
I, I went into the Marines. Well, the reason being is because at first I didn't think I was going to have a scholarship offer. So right. I, I, it really, it re I said, I told myself, of course, like everybody else, I'm not staying in this small town. I want to get out and do something. Right. So I, I, I joined the Marines. And uh, then when I came back from the Marines, I had a scholarship offer waiting for me. So I took that and went ahead and went to college and played football. So did my Marine time and then went to college and played football. Right. And then after that, well, I got a little, I got a job of singing and dancing on a show at Opera Land USA. So oh, I did that. So I did that for a while. And so, and I sang and danced there. And, and then the, my love for acting and drama and singing and stuff just, just took over. Yeah. Well, um, from there, um, just life happens, you know, life happens, Opera Land shut down. I had to mm -hmm. find a for real job, so I became, um, you know, I, I became an EMS and EMS worker, uh, paramedic, firefighter, doing all that stuff, kind of stuff. So I did that, and then, um, yeah, one thing led to another, and I met met some people that was doing some short films. Right. I did that on the weekends, and lo and behold, I met I met a guy that had an agent. I talked to his agent; she took me on. And then it just went downhill from there. I started getting some commercials. I started, right. and that's, and this is a very quick detail of my yeah. life. So this is from middle school to high school. And um, so, yeah, I, I got my agent. She started putting me into things. I got a lot of commercials. I got some feature films under my belt. And then one day she called me and said, hey, Stranger Things wants to know your availability. Oh, wow. And I'm going, Wow. You know, I love Stranger Things. My kids love Stranger Things. I'm right. going, absolutely. You know, I, I to, my availability is whenever they need me, pretty much. I'll take yeah. off. I'll do whatever I got to do. So I, I got on that show and that was, it was a small part. And I'm, but I'm so thankful that that show called me and, and was, I was able to get on that, um, that production because just being able to see that type of production, um, that early in my career, it helped me out a lot, you know, and, mm -hmm. I, and I, I keep my mouth shut when I'm around people that know more than I do. And I listen mm -hmm. and I learn. So that's the best way I can do it. And so from there, you know, like Olivia and, and Kelly and uh, Buddy and uh, Jason and all of them, mm -hmm. the ones that you met from Voorhees, we right. met each right. other on other productions and we just became a film family and so we started doing films together and Jason saw something in me that, that, uh, that he really thought that I could play the role of Jason Voorhees, which right. I mean, right. an iconic character, like anytime you get a, a chance to play an iconic character, like Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers or J J Freddy Krueger, anything like that in a horror right. film, it's, you want to jump on it. So I told him, absolutely. I started studying the character. I got a hold of Kane Hodder, told him what I was doing. He kind of helped me through some things. He talked to me and told me what he did to get ready for the role. That helped me a lot. That helped me a lot. And uh, Kane and CJ, all of them guys that, that has played the role before me has um, really inspired me to become a better actor. Really. You know, people say, you know, that had to be the easiest role you've ever done because you don't have no speaking lines in it. Well, no, that's not true. That's it's it's actually it was actually a very taxing role on me because you don't speak, so it makes it harder to come across of what you and and Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers both they have a persona about them that that yeah they don't have to speak because you're gonna you see you, they tell a story through themselves just by walking you know right. you know what kind of person you know what kind of thing they're gonna be I mean that's right. just with the way they walk and the way they do things. So right. getting to play that character, it really broadened my, I think it broadened my views on, on all movies. And I watch movies different now. I don't, I don't watch movies the same. And I watch for those little flaws and stuff like that. Not to, by no means am I but watching it to, to criticize. I'm watching yeah. it to learn because, yeah. you know, every movie that I've been in and I've watched myself play in, I've always said, man, I wish I could have done this better. I wish I could have done this better. Right. Even though it looked good on film, I figured I just know myself and I'm always striving to be better. And right. so I want to bring the people that are watching me 
the best that that possibly can be. And when I see something that I could do better, then I know that part, some of those people are going to see the same thing. And I don't want that to happen. I want them to look at me and go, that's, that was a great performance. You know, I don't, I don't want them to look at me and say, well, you know, it was good, but you could have done this and all this. And I, and I don't mind construction constructive criticism by anybody. I mean, if someone sees that I'm doing something wrong or not right, right. I love for people to write me and tell me, I wish you'd have done this. I, mean, I will take that and learn from it. Not, I won't, I'm not going to get mad about it. Right. So that's a, um, a lot to dissect. So what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry. No, no, no. It's, it's great. It's great because uh, I have a couple of questions. So when you first started, um, you you were heavily heavily into sports um, yes. enough that you went to the Marines to make sure you get a scholarship to be able to go to college. To play college ball. So uh, was was football kind of like your first passion? Was like there a time you wanted to go play professional football? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, there was a time that, that when I was playing that I did have the opportunity to at least try out for the NFL. And okay. um, that that was a very good experience and a very mm, brought me back down to life experience. You know, as, right. as fast as I was and as high as I could jump, there were still guys out there that could do it a lot faster and a lot better than I could. And not that I wasn't good. It's just it's just yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. I'm sorry, but those guys are – they're a different breed. It, right. it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I don't agree with some of the money they get. They get paid a lot more than they probably should. But at the same time, these guys are superhuman almost when it comes to speed and when it comes to uh, ability to jump and to run and to just catch – some of them just catching the ball. You know, the right. quarterbacks are so smart to, to read defenses and stuff like that. So – I, I had to hand it to all of the athletes out there that they, they they're they're amazing people. They're amazing yeah. people. So now you made the transition from um, going from sports into acting. So yes, what kind of, what kind of uh, inspired you to do that? What kind of uh, made you know, help you make that transition? Well, um, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, when you when you work in EMS and you work on the ambulance. And you're doing it every day, or not every day, sorry. I, I, you know, you work your 24 shift, 24 hour shift. Right. It gets very, it gets very taxing and very, you get burnt out pretty quick, is what I'm trying to say. Right. So I was looking for something that I could get out of that profession. I'd done it for, at that time, I, I guess I'd been doing it for like 12, 13 years. Oh, wow. And it was just, it was, yeah, and it was getting, I mean, I'm no spring chicken. I'm 51 years old, fixing to turn 52 in May. So, I mean, you know, so I've, I've done a lot in my lifetime. But um, uh, I guess I was looking for something else when it happened. And a guy just so happened to be in Hopkinsville that was doing some short films. I went yeah. and did his little Western short film. And while I was on that set, I met a man named Danny Ramsey, which today I pretty much would say, I owe him. He gave me my first feature film that I did was Switch Soldier's Joy back a long time ago. And it was a period piece. And uh, I met his agent through him that she was on set with him. And I met her and she she just said that she would be happy to represent me if I get some headshots and all that. And I right. did that not thinking anything was going to come out of it. But at the same time, I thought this was an outlet for me to where I could at least concentrate on being an actor and not so much of the death and stuff that I've seen every day on the ambulance that I when, when I was working on that. So it was trying to get myself in a different headspace, I guess you would say, right. to um, just to enjoy life a little bit. You know, I had kids right. and and I was coming home and I was I was letting things bother me that probably shouldn't have bothered me. And, right. and when that happens, I want to take myself out of that situation. I don't want to cause other people pain because of what I'm feeling. And right. so, and I, and I felt like that I was doing that a little bit. So that's the reason that I got into acting. So. Cool. So let me ask you, so when you started acting, um, was there like a particular moment where you're like, you know what, this is what I want to do. This is kind of the direction I want to um, go. 
Well, it's you know, to be honest with you, when when my the agent that that signed me and yeah. she started putting me in for things and I started getting these commercials and started getting pretty decent pay with it, I'm right. going, Wow, I think I could really do this if if I put my mind to it and and put, you know, a lot more work into it, you know, acting right. classes, going, you know, doing stuff. And so I did. And when I did that, well, things started happening for me and more roles came available to me. Now right. I've gotten several roles for the way that I'm, the way I look, I mean, right. you know, cause they look for a certain, I'm six, two away, two thirty. I'm right. a big guy, you know? So I, I I've used that to my advantage. I mean, yes. really, I mean, you have to, so I've used that and, um, uh, it just put me in a different headspace as far as, you know, am I going to become a real actor or am I going to do this on the side for fun? Well, yeah. I decided I'm going to do this for real. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to go out on that, that board on the boat, as they say, and take that leap and just see what would happen. Right. And so far, I mean, so far, yeah, I, I'm not going to lie to you. It's a struggle. Sometimes it's a struggle. Yeah. It, and it's sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's it's like, I don't think I'm going to make it this month. I don't think I'm going to make it. And then all of a sudden something happens and you do make it. So it right. keeps, it's, it's kind of like golf. You know what? You'll have 17 bad shots and then you got that one hole that you, right. that you birdie and you go, I can do this game. I'm good at it. So that's, <laughs> so that's what, it, that's kind of what I do. I kind of right. like the game of golf. I just play it until I can make a good shot, you know? Right. Well, you know, you brought up a good point, too. Um, I just interviewed uh, Sean Cronin, uh, which is notorious for playing bad guys in, like, you know, The Mummy, uh, uh, Mission Impossible. He's, like, he's done a ton of films. And he, yes. he's got kind of the same thing. There's a lot of actors uh, and actresses that go out there, and they compare themselves to other people. And they're like, oh, I want this role, I want this role, whatever. But they don't play their image to their... Um, to their best advantage and you know sean was talking about that sean was talking about he just has this uh face of a villain you know um and so every role they always wanted to cast him as a villain and at first he wasn't you know he was um you know he wanted to do something else but then he started realizing hey this you know th this is my way in is to play the villain you know so you know and you're talking you're 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 a big you're a big guy and so you're using that to be able to, to, to play to your advantage. So, you know, um, you, so the advice out there to the people that's wanting to become uh, actors is stop worrying about everybody else and figure out what you're good at and what, you know, what, uh, uh, and play to your strengths, you know? 100%. You do not ever come into any job, whether it be acting or, or anything else and try to be like somebody else. You be yourself. Right. No matter what, because there's only one you, <clears throat> right. and uh, yeah, never, never try to be something that you're not. That that's that can only take you so far. It can take you right. some places. It can, but right. it can only take you so far. You have to be yourself. And I I try to be myself when I go onto a set. I don't care if I'm playing a preacher, if I'm playing Jason Voorhees, if I'm right. playing a cop or whatever I'm playing. I, I try to I try to transform myself into that character, right. Right. but I'm still being myself. I'm right. you know a director. You know Jason Pitts told me a long time ago. You know that that if I'm going to play any character, you 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 have to yeah get into that character, but make it your own. And right. and so you know that's what I've tried to do. Even with Jason Voorhees, even after what Kane Hodder told me, I still wanted to make that character mine. I'm, right. I'm not, I wasn't trying to be a Kane Hodder. I don't right. want to be a Kane Hodder because there's no one better at Jason Voorhees than Kane Hodder. I'm on, right. And I will, I will always say, I don't care how many roles I get as Jason Voorhees. Right. Kane Hodder was my favorite one. I mean, I mm -hmm. love CJ. I love Derek. I love all of them. But Kane Hodder was my man as far as being a Jason Voorhees. So, I, I just want people to understand that when you get and when you take on a task of doing anything, if you take on that task, do it the best of your ability, right. not of somebody else's or not what everybody else is, is expecting of you. You have to do what is what you can do under your ability. Don't right. try to do more than your ability. 
but don't under don't undermine yourself and not do it to the best of your ability because right. the best of your ability is what you can do as a person. Exactly. And so let me ask you this. So you've been doing this for a, a, a um, you know some time now. Yes. What's the biggest lesson that you've learned um, through this? The biggest lesson I've learned. Um, don't do too much. You can you can you can do too much. You can you can uh, you know when a director and, and I'm, this is strictly for acting. This is not not any other job out there strictly for acting because that's what I do now. I'm not trying to speak no. for any other job out there but acting. When you're on a set and you see something, don't try to do too much. Don't try to change things up. So the biggest lesson that I've learned is to let them direct you. If a right. director sees something that that he wants done, but you right. think it can be done better, do it the way he wants to do it, and then show him that it can be done better. You, there's no reason to undermine a director or a writer or anything right. else. And I've seen people do that, and it's killed their career. I don't want people out there to think when you get on set, yes, that character is yours. I understand yeah. that. Make that character yours. But if a right. director sees it and that's his vision to do it another way then do it the way the director wants it done. You're an actor. You can change up the way you want. You, just because you're thinking one way doesn't mean it has to be that way. So the biggest, I guess my biggest thing is I've learned to accept that I'm not always right. right. I'm not always going to be right in what I think. So I can adapt to that. And that's what you have. And you have to adapt pretty quickly on set sometimes. Right. So that's my biggest, that was my biggest takeaway from it. Okay, cool. So um, now, is there a particular role or a particular uh, film that you would love to be in? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I've been asked this several times, and that is so hard. Yeah, I, I love Westerns. The, everybody right. that knows me knows my love for horses, knows my love for the outdoors and stuff. I, I'm, a right. big, I'm a big cattleman. I'm a big, I, I just love being on the back of a horse any, any time. So a perfect role for me would be some kind of Western. That's what I, I, I mean. I, and I've been in a couple of Westerns yeah. and stuff. I've ridden horses, but my perfect role would be something like, and I, I mean, I'm going to say it, everybody's, but Yellowstone, something like that. That's right. a ranch hand, you know, being on that. Cause that's what I do. I mean, I mean, you see, I wear Ariat shirts. I mean, I, I, I mean, I wear the cowboy boots. I mean, anybody that knows me, if they see me yeah. out, I'm in my Ariat boots, my Ariat pants, and most right. of my Ariat shirt. I mean, I, I and my cowboy hat. I usually wear my cowboy hat everywhere I go. So, so I'm 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 a country boy through and through. And and I right. I, I, I try, you know, I open doors for ladies, and and I, I say thank you. So that's what I that's what I do. But um, if a perfect role, I think would be some type of western or something on the back of a horse. Yeah. So now, now, when you say Western, you talk like modern Western or uh, either one. A, either one. I could do a period piece back in eighteen hundreds, mm -hmm. all yeah. the way to the mod modern thing like Yellowstone or or the right. Four Sixes or anything like that. Yes. Uh, cutting horses. I love cutting horses. I love. I love. I love the 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 whole. Anything to have to do with rodeos or anything. I rode professionally for almost five years. You know, right. I did IPRA, International Pro Rodeo Association. Me and a bunch of guys got together and decided we was going to be rodeo riders. And that's what we did. We went up the East Coast and we got on the back of bulls and barebacks and, right. and rode to you know, rode till we couldn't ride no more. So, uh, but quarter horses, I love, I, love the, I love the whole thing about the quarter horses and the cutting horses and stuff like that. So that's right. what I love. Uh, and I can absolutely see you as a character, like on a tomb, you know, like Tombstone. Yeah, I, yeah. I would love to be on a, on a show like Tombstone. It would be amazing. Yes. So, uh, so cool. So, um, uh, there's another thing I wanted to talk to you about too. So, when we were talking about, uh, you know, talking on the Cross the Pro Show, uh, you had mentioned um, coming in and talking to middle school kids um, yes. about pulling in. So I know you have the mask. So uh, can you show people the mask real quick? Absolutely. Me? Yep, absolutely. So when, when you come in and talk to these kids, you come in dressed as Voorhees. I, <laughs> I, I do. 
I, okay. The, okay. I, I did it. I've done it. I've done it three times now in, different, in three different schools. I've got five schools this year in May, sometime in April and May, that I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to talk to schools. Okay. But yeah. last year I did three schools. My first school that I went to, I went into a classroom. And I went and I just had on a T-shirt and and clothes and I brought my mask with me. And the kids kind of responded okay once they learned that I was an actor and all that stuff and and like what I said. The second time I did it, I told the teacher when she introduces me, I'm going to walk in with the mask on if that was okay. And she said, absolutely. Right. So I, I did that. And that whole room just shut up. Just, I mean, literally right, right. the middle school kids that I was talking to, they all turned and looked and just every one of them didn't make a sound until I spoke. So, right. and you know, and, I, and I'm telling you, when I put this on, right. I don't talk. Even if I put it on right now, I'm not going to yeah. talk because <laughs> that's the character is Jason Voorhees. He don't talk. So right. I don't talk. So, once I got into the room and I got to the front of the class and, you know, I walked, I, I had that menacing walk and I walked up to the class. I turned around and then I'd look at them and tilt my head and then look at them and then I take the mask off and then I start talking to them. Right. They listened to, they never said a word. And <laughs> I had their, I had their uninvited, uh, uninvited attention. I got right. to talk to them. And this is a passion of mine that, that has been brewing ever since I started this acting career. Hmm. I've seen I see the statistics all the time of 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 teen suicides of hmm. of bullying and all of this and then I it just I've got kids myself right. and I I would stop to think of what would happen if one of my kids were being bullied. Right. Well, first of all, I would probably hurt somebody. Right. Second of all, I it, it broke my heart to think. Right that one of my kids or anybody's kids would have to get bullied. And so I took it up on myself to go to these schools, talk to these teachers and say, this is what I do. If it would fit in your curriculum, please let me in your classroom and talk to your kids for one hour. Right. Well, it worked. And, and teachers are going, you know what? This is really good. So right. I went to one school and literally before I was done, I had, I had like nine teachers in the right. doorway watching me talk to these kids. Right. And it was like, they all wanted me to come back and do it again. So, right. but they saw there was kids that would break down and cry because I, I reached a part of them that nobody could reach because Sometimes a kid don't want to reach out to a teacher or something because they think they're going to get in trouble. They think that they're going to that that they're going to hurt somebody's feelings or something like that, or they're embarrassed. Most of them are embarrassed to do it. So, right. but when I talked to them and I told them my story, right. they seem to relate to that. And no, I don't bring Jason Voorhees into it as in like a serial killer aspect right. of it. That ain't what right. I, I do. This mask right here just for the shock factor and right. to get kids to get kids attention and it right. and it brings brings them to the forefront i mean literally i've got kids setting up like this looking at me because right. i've got their attention that gives me the opportunity to to tell them you're in middle school right now who you decide that you're going to hang around is going to define yourself in high school and for the rest of your life because if you choose the wrong people you're going to go down the wrong path you go down the wrong path, then bad things are going to happen. Right. You choose the right people to hang around now, then you will continue to choose the right people even through high school. You've got right. to set yourself apart from all of your other peers, from all of your other friends, and say, I'm not going to be a follower. I'm going to be a leader. Right. Can you have, can you have 36 leaders? Absolutely, you can have 36 leaders. You do not have right. to have one leader to – Five people following you. No, that's not it. Right. Every one of you have it in you to be a leader. And that's what you need to do is step up and say, I'm going to lead this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it this way. I don't care what anybody else says. This is the right way to do it. I'm going to do it this way. Right. That's what you got to do. That's what I did. When I was in high school, I had all kinds of opportunities to go down the wrong path. Right. I chose not to. I chose not to because of me. 
I chose not to because I didn't want to, to hurt my parents. I chose not to because I didn't want to hurt my coach's feelings. I didn't want to get in trouble and, 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 and possibly mess up my career as a football player or, or whatever else, whatever else I was doing. Yeah. I chose the right path. I chose the right friends. Everybody has that opportunity to do that. You just got to be told that you are, are worth enough that you can do that. Kids sometimes think they're not worth enough. They are they have to follow somebody else because they're not good enough. They don't dress right. They don't act right. They don't eat the right foods. That's bull crap. Everybody, every kid, and that's what I tell kids. And I don't cut no corners, man. I'm tough with them because you have to be tough with them. I'm a dad. I can be a dad. I can be a dad to kids I don't even know. And kids love me for that. Teachers right. love me for that. I'm saying stuff that sometimes they can't say. Right. And and it's and, and the kids really, really and they I mean I've had kids come up and hug me. Right. That right there means more to me than any acting career, any role that I get ever. If I have a kid, it's oh my God, man. I can I could talk about this for hours, dude. Yeah. And you put me on this pedestal and I will go with it. It's not it's not your show no more. It's mine. So I'm sorry, but no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, man, that's, that's the kind of passion that I have for these kids, man. Right. It's just, I'm tired of seeing kids kill themselves because they think they're not mm -hmm. worth it. And it's, 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 it's gotta stop. It's gotta stop. This bullying has to stop. It's, it's just, it's just ridiculous. And it's, it's, and if I can save one kid right. for every classroom I go to, then I did something right. I did something good, and I feel better about myself. Cool. You know, I think it's awesome. One, you know, like you said, um, um, just wearing that mask grabs their attention. And sometimes that's what they need. They need someone who could come in and just immediately grab their attention, which is what that mask mm -hmm. does. That's it. That's it, you know. But what I feel like, what I really like about what you're doing is I can tell exactly how passionate you are about it. You know, and be able to use that in your in your uh, your platform as an actor to be able to go in and reach those kids. I mean, that in itself is inspiring. That's worth all of it. You know, uh, to be able just to take that and go in there and, and reach those kids. And um, you know, like you said too, is that it, it affords you um, an opportunity that most parents or uh, teachers don't get is that you, because you know of your your status to be able to go in there and you can be able to you're able to say things and do things that most people can't but it's things right. that it's done and said you know and, and it's it's sad that we you know we, we've come to in society we've come to that uh where you know you know we limit teachers and parents to be able to come in but you know as a parent i I'm, i want to tell you thank you for what you're doing uh, for thank going you. in there and and uh, and you're know, talking to the kids, I, I think that that's 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 awesome in itself, you know. Uh, so um, let me let me ask you this. Um, I mean, because I can see how passionate you are about it. Is there like a particular event uh, that happened that kind of led you to do that? Um, it, probably. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, yes, it is, and, and this is the thing. I, and I'm not going to say any names, but yes, yeah. there, I have been I have been around people that have been bullied, and right. I have seen the hurt and the anguish and the um. Let's go ahead and take yeah. a minute because, you know, I, I can tell that you're really passionate about it, man. And it, so I know it comes from somewhere. Yeah, you know I mean, any any kid, no kid, no kid, right, should have to endure um, bullying, criticism, hatred, racism, anything like that. This, it's just, um, it's it's become a part of society that um, people overlook and uh, people uh, accept. Right. And I'm not, and I'm not going to accept it. Uh, I need, I need for kids to know when I go in and talk to them 
that they're not alone and no. uh, they they are worth enough that that they are needed here on this earth and that they need to stay here because there is a purpose for them and uh, a lot of kids that come to school they don't think they don't have that self worth right and um, and it kills me to see that and uh, yes I had a uh, I had an I had an incident where a, a very it, let's just say a loved one right. was being bullied and uh, well it didn't end very well for the bully I'll tell you, tell you that yeah and um, and I chose right there that if I'm walking through Walmart and I see somebody get bullied right you can right. bet you can bet everything that you own Right. That I will say something to that person that's bullying that other person. Bullying comes in so many different ways. Not just not just calling somebody names or 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 you know pushing somebody around. Bullying comes in so many different fat forms and, and stuff in nowadays. And so you have to be able to recognize it and you have to be able to do it the right way to stop it. And, and all you got to do sometimes is step in to a situation with somebody, you know, they don't know what to say or know what to do. And you can step in for that person and talk for them. Sometimes that's all somebody needs is for somebody else to step in, step up and speak for them because they don't know what to say or how to do it. That could save somebody's life. That could save somebody's just self-esteem or anything yeah. else. It's just. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm very, yeah. It's, just, it's a very hard subject, and and it and it's it's a very sad and and continually to be an everyday occurrence in these schools where kids are being bullied, and and it's just I'm trying to. I, I'm a very small part of if of just talking to. I don't get to talk to every class, but. I'm right. just a very small part of trying to help out. There's other people out there just trying to do the same thing I am. So right. I just need the outlet and I need the people to allow me to come in and do it. And, and, and that's all I ask. I don't even ask for money. I don't, I, I don't ask to get paid to do this. Right. I don't want to get paid. My payment enough is having a kid come up and hug me. Right. Or thank me for just being there and talking to them that day. That's payment enough. I don't. I don't care about the pain. I don't care about money. Right. It's not. It's not it. So and that's like I said, man. It's it's awesome what you're doing. You know, and uh, and talking to these kids and hopefully you know people seeing this too, they understand that uh, you know if they see something, say something. You know, don't. Be I know. <laughs> Sometimes I hate crying about it because people, other people that see my interviews, I, this is not the first interview where I cried, but people know that, that they know, I want people to know my heart. I, I want people to know that, that I, I'm not doing this for um, claim or, or sad. Right. I'm not, I'm not doing it for anything, but to help save a kid's life. I right. just, it's all like, because I have kids too. And, and right. I just know what would happen if my kids were bullied and people, my friends, if, if their kids got bullied, I, I just, I want people to be able to come to me and say, I need you. I need you to come to my mm -hmm. class. I need you to talk to my son. I need you to talk to my daughter, you know, and, and just, and when I learn that kids go through that, it just, I want to hear their story and yeah. I want to see if I can help them. And it's just, and now I've gotten into where I've talked to uh, soldiers with PTSD mm -hmm. I worked on, I worked on the ambulance at a place around Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and I saw a lot of deaths. I saw a lot of kids, and I say kids. I'm talking about 21, 22, 25 right. year olds, blowing their heads off because mm -hmm. of war and because of the Gulf War and going back to war and stuff like that. Well, now right. I've then got into a, a an organization to where I can talk to to soldiers with PTSD and tell them that the same thing. That look, I know what you've been through. I know it's hard, but you are worth every every day that you're on this earth. You're worth being here. 
You are needed on this earth, not just for you, but for your loved ones and for everybody that, that you affect around you. You know, right. so, you know, sometimes that's all they need to hear is that they are worth it and they're needed. You know, they feel like they're not needed anymore. They feel like that the government used them and sent them over there. And that's all they're good for. It's just a body to go fight a war. And that's not what it's right. that's not what it's for. It's not what it's about. Right. So I just want to be that advocate for them to be able to talk to them and to be that another avenue that they can take to where it's like, dude, I'll drink a beer with you. Let's talk. Let's just sit right. down and talk. Let's just let's I don't care. I don't even drink beer, but I will. Let's right. do it. You know, let's let's do that. I'll, I'll talk to you however long you need. One o'clock in the morning. Call me. You know, I want to be there for them. I want to be there for people. And that's right. and that's what it's about. It's not about leaving a legacy of being on screen and being the best Jason Voorhees. It's about saving lives. It's about, about being a good person. And right. that's that's what it's all about. I may not be, a, you know, something could happen to me tomorrow and I maybe not ever act again, but right. I can still help people. Right. It's it's just right. that's what it's all about, man. It's right. it's not all it's not always about making fame about yourself of course everybody wants to do well and and i do i mean i want to make a living at being an actor and, and doing that stuff that's what i love it's my passion just like yeah. a firefighter or a police officer or a teacher or a doctor or anything else it's the same thing it's just a different career i don't right. care if you work at mcdonald's or work at wherever if you've got a job do it the best you can while you're there right you know have self-respect about yourself and and and, and just when you're at a job or what, I don't care what you do, if you're sweeping a parking lot, sweep that parking lot to the best of your ability. That's right. you're already there. You're already doing it. Just make it right. Make it good. So that's what I want, man. That's, that's all I want. Cool. You know, first of all, I want to say thank you for opening up and sharing like that. Um, you know, because, you know, like you said, you know, about being a, a, an actor, first of all, what people don't realize is God puts you in different positions um, and gives you sort of a platform, which is what that is. You know, being an actor gives you, um, you know, sort of a platform and it gives you um, access uh, to certain things. You know what I mean? Um, but to be able to use that and understand that your ability comes beyond an actor. Your purpose is beyond an actor. Your purpose 100 you know, is working you know, with these kids and uh, with these uh, young soldiers and, and uh, you know, um, you know, to be able to do that, you know, and, and talk to those, uh, you know, the, those individuals, um, just, you know, just using Voorhees as, you know, the mask and all that is just a platform. So, um, you know, thank you for that. Because, you know, that's another thing that um, I try to stress too on this show. Uh, and I say at the end of every show and I, and I, Hope people understand that is that you are uniquely designed with a purpose. One hundred percent. You're uniquely designed with a purpose, and you know, and, and you kind of touched on this. That means that nobody else is designed to do what you've been designed to do. You know, people think that um, that they're you know they don't see worth, they don't see value in themselves. Um, but I think that's one of the reasons I push this show. Um, and to help people find their purpose and their passion because living out your purpose and your passion gives you something to live for. When you 100%. know your, person, your, your, per, uh, your, your passion and your purpose is, it gives you something to live, uh, live for beyond yourself because now you're doing, you, you realize that what you're, you're created for is to help other people. 100% you're that's exactly right you're you're put on this earth to 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 help each other and to it's just that's the way I look at it anyway I, I look at it for exactly the way you just said it you know yes yeah of course I want to be one of the best I, yeah I want to win an Oscar of course I do I want to I want to I want to be the best actor I can possibly be. I want people to recognize me and say man you was you was awesome in that show right but more than that I want to be the guy that says, dude, you saved my life. Right. I appreciate what you said to me and it, and it turned my life around. That right there means more to me than any role that I'd ever do. Right. And it should for anybody. I don't care what you do. And a, a police officer, police officers every day, 
run into people that are down on their luck, that are needing help. And that police officer has that choice. You can either turn your back to that person. Right. You could arrest that person or you could help that person. Right. I'm not, I'm not talking bad about police. I, I, I'm trust me. My brother was one. I, I, I've done my bout with different things. I'm, I'm just saying everybody has every day can come across somebody that needs help. I don't care if it's walking into a supermarket and telling some, somebody you look good today. And it doesn't right. matter. You know what? That may be all they need to put a smile on their face to get them through to another day. I'm just saying there's little things that we all can do to make somebody else's life happy. You don't always have to just focus on yourself. You don't, you don't. That's I help people every day. I help my friends do different things. I help people every day. If I plus can, everybody knows me when they ask James to do something, James is going to be there to help them. That's just the way I am. It's just the way I, I mean, literally I, I would, I'd, I'd give the shirt off my back for anybody. I saw yeah. that's why I've done it. But I just want people to understand that being an actor, you are put on a different pedestal. You are put in a different light and you, you can either use that to good or you can use that for self accomplishment. You can use that for whatever, but it's up to you what you do with that. And I chose to do with my platform as much as I can to help these kids to be better people, to make the right choices and to live a happy life without being bullied, without being to come to school, without having to worry about what they have on their feet or what kind of pants they have on what kind of shirt or coat they have on. It shouldn't matter. Right. It's, it should matter about people, people in general. Right. So right. You know, and, thank and you for, of, thank you. You know, to kind of uh, um, um, add to the, kind of what you're saying too, is anybody could, could, uh, uh, could show kindness to another person. You don't have to have a, sp a specific, you know, platform or, you know, you could always no. show um, you know, kindness to somebody else. The second Absolutely. Thing that um, I, I try to um, instill in people is, and one of the reasons I do this as well, is to take time when you're with people. And, you know, if you're at work or wherever you're at, take time and really get to talk to the people you're with. You know, one of the mm -hmm. things I noticed, that, you know, with our, our society right now is everybody is glued to the phone. You know what I mean? Everybody's glued to this. You could be at dinner with somebody, your friends or whatever, and everybody is sitting at that table on a phone. You know? Yeah. And, and I'm like, you know, put the phone down a minute and get to know and talk to each other. Because like right. you said, you never know what somebody else is going through. You know, mm -hmm. until you ask. No. And not only do you not know what they're going through, um, one of the things I've learned in the last year doing all this is um, you never get to hear somebody's story. You know, if you don't talk to people, you don't get to hear their story and you don't get to hear some of the things that they've uh, been through and some of the things they've overcome. I mean, let me tell you, I've been doing that for, you know, a year now. And it's so inspiring to be able to just sit down and actually get to hear, you know, uh, people in, in their story and, and what, you know, what they've gone through. And, you know, uh, and the second part of that, too, is don't be afraid to share your story. Absolutely because not. Um, you know, when you when you share your story, whenever we go through things, um, I tell people all the time, when we go through things, so, sometimes it's not just for you. Sometimes that can be something that somebody else could learn from your mistakes and, and things that you've gone through, too. And 100%. Do and uh, don't be embarrassed about your story. It's right. it's it's what's brought you to where you're at today. It's it's brought it's it's what it's what made you the person that you are. It doesn't matter if it's embarrassing or anything like that, man. There's, we've all done things that are stupid. We've all done things that are embarrassing. It's, but it brings you to where you're at today. You, you don't be embarrassed to tell your story. I'm not. You know, I've I've right. messed up. I've made my mistakes. You know, I'll I'll t I'll tell people I've made those mistakes. I'm trying to fix some mistakes as I that I've done in the past right now. But yeah. everybody does. I mean, it's just the way it is. That doesn't mean that you can't be a good person to everybody that you're around. Right. It's just no reason. You know, be good to everybody. 
I mean, there's just no reason why you can't hold the door for somebody. Tell somebody good morning. Tell someone they look nice today. Tell, tell someone that, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Littlest things can change somebody's life. And you never know what that person's going through. And no people, you know, I don't know. Hey, I could talk. We could talk about this for hours, man. I mean, we really could. And I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come on here and be able to do this. I mean, it's, this is a, a platform that a lot of people don't get. And I really appreciate uh, being able to, to, to talk to the viewers, whoever's watching, and let them know a little bit about me as a person and not just as an actor, right. but me as a person in general. And I'll, I, maybe people will look at me different. Some people may look at me like he's full of crap. I don't know. But what I do is genuinely what I love to do. And it's, right. it's, it is to help these people is to help these kids. I, I'm not doing it for fame or fortune. I promise you that I'm not asking for money. When I go to these schools, I'm not asking for anything. I ask for their time. That's all I ask. Give me an hour. Just give me an hour. And, and I can, I, I can possibly change somebody's life. And it, and it can go for the bully, too. You know, the bully's listening to me, too, because most of the time, the bully's in that same room as the right. one that's being bullied. So, right. you know, maybe something could happen with that bully that, that can, he could hear that or she could hear that. And trust me, girls are almost probably as worse than boys when it comes to bullying. Mm. Uh, but maybe one of them could hear something and say, you know what, maybe I need to stop doing this. And I need to apologize for what I've done and get my life right and start – following a different group of guys or different group of girls or something like that. I, I don't know. Right. You never, you just never know. Right. So. So cool. So I'm going to ask you, this is my last question. So um, um, if you could give somebody a piece of advice, um, you, if you want to give it in, in, you know, for acting or just in life in general, what would that piece of advice be? Um, that's a good question. It, it's kind of simple too, you know, take, take every day, one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to smell the roses as the old saying goes, slow right. down. When, if you have a family or if you, and everybody has a family, you may not have a wife, you may not have a kid, but you have a family. Right. Tell them that you love them. Tell them because I'm telling you, they're not going to always be here. I just lost my mom last April. It's been a year and it kills me every day. Right. And uh, you never know how much you need your mom until she's not there anymore. Right. Um, but my advice would be to live your life the way that you would want someone to treat you. D do, do as the old saying goes, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do that. Try that. Um, if, if it's just, you got to slow down and, and live life people in today's world, everything is so fast. And yes, it has to do with these phones and has right. to do with technology. Just because I remember back in the early or the late seventies, the early eighties, man, life seemed to date forever to go by right. because dude, you was outside, you was playing, you live life. You was around campfires. You was around bonfires. You was eating together. You didn't have cell phones to stop you from eating or talking to each other. Right. You asked each other how your day went. You, that's the only thing that you had. Right. Today's world is not like that. And I, I, I'm a creature of habit, too. And I, mm -hmm. I have to admit, I've done the same thing. This stupid phone, they, they, it gets me, too. I get wrapped up. Everybody mm -hmm. likes to watch the reels. And everybody likes to watch... TikTok and all that stuff. And it is, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm right. not knocking it, but at the same time, it's not everything. Right. It's not your entire life, you know? So just live life, go out, go out and take a Sunday drive. People don't even know what a Sunday drive is anymore. There's right. no Sunday drives anymore, man. There's not go out and take a Sunday drive any day of the week. Look at things, enjoy life. Do things with your family. Go to a pool. Go to a mountain. Go to a hike. Do right. whatever it takes to make yourself happy and to live life and to live it to the fullest. That's all. That's what I and that's what I'm. I, dude, I'm fifty. I'm fixing to turn fifty-two in May. One more month, man. April, May. I'm May twenty-seventh is when I turn fifty-two. Right. 
You still look and, good. <laughs> well, thank you. But <laughs> I'm trying. I try. I'll tell you what, it's, it's getting harder. <laughs> going to the gym every day is getting harder. But it, please, please, folks, just if you get, do one thing, just slow down, live life. I, I, this is another thing I love being an actor. You know, the places I get to go and the people I get to meet, I don't take that for granted. Right. When I go to these conventions and stuff like that and I meet these fans, I do not take that for granted. Just like this last week when I was in, in and I'm going to bring this up, I was at Bet City Con in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Right. I met this little girl. She was so shy. She came up. She just kind of smiled, but she loved horror. She was only, oh, I can't remember how, how old Sabrina was. Uh, seven or eight, I think. I think she wow. was seven or eight. But anyway, I found out from a mama that she just beat cancer. Oh, wow. I looked at that little girl and I said, I don't want you to take my picture. I said, I want your picture. Wow. I want to take my picture because you are the hero. Right. You are the one. You're the true hero here. You're right. the one that, that is stronger than anybody I could ever imagine being. You're wow. stronger than I am. I don't care how many muscles I got. You are stronger than anything I do. And she just wow. smiled at me and she hugged me and she got, she got on my knee. I got down on her level and I, and she got on my knee and she took a picture with me. And I said, I'm taking a picture with you. You understand that, right? <laughs> I want this picture for me to be with you because I want to remember you. Right. So, that's the kind of people that I get to meet all the time. And I, God, I, that's, that's what makes it worth everything that I do with this mask. It makes it worth everything. Just getting to meet that little girl right there. And I, I love all the fans that come out and support us at these horror cons and conventions and stuff. I, I, I love it. I, I, I appreciate it so much. They're, they're the greatest fans in the world. They're the greatest people in the world. And, and, I, and I love every one of them, and I appreciate it. And I will always, always show them respect. Always. Cool. So let me ask you uh, this. Um, it's like, I know moments like that is, is really special, uh, you know, to be able to meet people. And, and, and uh, especially stuff like that, you know, where you get to meet, you know, this, this little girl, um, you know, I know that those those moments are like just I, I want to say it's, um, it's surreal. I mean, you know, when you yes. get to of those. So um, let me ask you: um, What are you? Are you currently working on any, any new projects? I start a new project in two weeks. Yes, okay. I do. It's called. It's it's already out on Facebook. It's already in on IMDb. It's called the Great White Throne. It's okay. got. It's it's going to have a, a pretty good cast in it. It's got me. It's got Eric Roberts. It's got John Dugan. It's got Sierra Hanna from the. She's a Yellow Power Ranger. It's okay. got several people in it that that is going. And I think it's going to be a very a very cool film. Yes. Uh, awesome. yeah, but I I start that in two weeks. I've got some other projects that I'm working on. People can go to IMDb and look up all the my, my projects that I got in the works. Right. Uh, I've got a link tree out there if uh, people want to look at that. It's got some of my short films on it. It's got some of my merchandise. It's got um, all my interviews and stuff that I've done in the past on it. This one right here will go on it and all that stuff. So I appreciate all the people that support me more than they'll ever know, more than I can ever thank them. It, it's it's this journey that I've been on so far has been absolutely amazing getting to meet people like you that actually gives us a platform to get out there and tell our, tell our story and to tell, you know, people that what we do, what we love to do so much. And, and I know I can't, I can't thank you enough for, for having a show like this and allowing us to come on and, and be ourselves and, and to tell people about our lives a little bit. I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate because I appreciate you guys coming on and be able to share uh, your stories. Uh, um, so I wanted to ask you uh, if somebody wanted to, um, you know, kind of uh, follow you in, especially if they wanted to have you come speak at their school. What's the best mm -hmm. way for them to do that? Uh, my link tree has everything on it. It has my email. Has my I think it even has my. I don't know if I have my cell number on it, Mike. But anyway, uh, yeah, they can reach me on Instagram at Stokes.James1414. That's yeah. Stokes.James1414, which is my email, which is Stokes.James1414 at gmail.com. So it's kind of simple. And then, of course, Facebook is James Stokes. Uh, I got a TikTok. 
uh, people can reach me through multiple, multiple ways. I've got a, you know, I, I've got different ways that they can reach me. Um, um, you have my cell number. I mean, it's literally if someone reaches out to you and wants to get a hold of me about that, about a school or anything like that, please direct them to me. Direct, give you can always give my number out for something like that. Um, that would be very, uh, I would talk to any school from middle school to high school. I've got a couple of colleges interested in wanting to talk, but more so it's the, um, the middle school and high school level kids is what I like really talking to. That's the ones that I'm trying to, trying to really reach, but yeah. So if uh, there's anybody out there, if you're a teacher out there, um, or, you know, or involved in a school that would love to have James come on, uh, I'll do is we'll put the links to his uh, social media uh, in the details. That way you can uh, mm -hmm. definitely reach out to him. Um, and, yeah. You know, uh, have him come out there and, you know, be able to talk to these students. That's, I think it's awesome. Um, thank so, you. So, well, thank you again, brother. Thank you so much for being on the show. Um, I know you're on your oh, way. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, you're on your way. Uh, yeah. Taking care of business. And you, you pull over on the side of the road to talk to us. Uh, and, you know, so I'm grateful for that. And, you know, uh, so, so keep up doing what you're doing, um, you know, and, you know, go up with, with the new project. And um, obviously, we're going to follow you and I'm going to have you back on the show and we're going to, uh, uh, you know, talk some more. So absolutely, Parks. I appreciate it. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, joining us today. Um, you know, like I said, this has been like, you know, a awesome interview and, you know, uh, an awesome chance uh, for me to really get to sit down and uh, hear uh, James's story and see how passionate he is uh, about our youth and not only our youth, but our soldiers as well. So, that, you know, that's completely, uh, you know, that was to me, I, I probably got more out of this than probably most of you guys. Uh, so, you know, uh, Again, I'm, I'm so excited he uh, came on and we did this. But until the next show, um, you guys remember, you are uniquely designed with a purpose. And always keep moving forward. Peace.